All right, Jesse on fire, welcome back to the channel. Well, I'm not gonna do what you guys think I'm gonna do, which is come on here and just freak out. You know, I'm not gonna freak out. But uh, that was a shocking night, huh? Pretty shocking outcome to the final final bell there. Like, uh, I think I said something along the lines of if, uh, if this fight doesn't go the way that I think it's gonna go, it would be the most shocked I've ever been ever and I'll basically just retire. So that's it. I'm shutting down the channel because, uh, you know, no, I'm not. I'm not shutting down the channel, but uh, wow, okay? I have a lot of thoughts about this, okay? We're gonna talk about the, the co-main event and the main event, and that's it. Those are the only two fights that, that we need to talk about, all right? Oh, by the way, if you guys like the content, subscribe and ring the bell. If you guys are new to this channel, just so we're clear, I spent the last two months saying that the Connor and Habib rematch was going to happen, and the last month saying that Dustin was gonna get ran over by Connor, basically as if, uh, you know, Dustin wasn't the number one contender. I basically wrote him off completely, which is, you know, what Connor did as well, which is why he got his head knocked off uh, and his leg kicked out. So, yeah, I think uh, I don't think anyone's going to take uh, Dustin lightly ever again, right? Including me or Connor. More consequential for Connor, though, I would say. Uh, but anyway, so there you go. I owned it. Even if you just got to this channel for the first time, I owned it, okay? I said for sure Connor was going to win that fight. And then I said Khabib was going to fight Connor in the rematch, which he would have if Connor would have won that fight. But uh, anyway, if you want to hear other ridiculous uh, your predictions that end up not being true, this is a great channel for you to subscribe to because I'll give lots of predictions and they probably won't be true. You know, I've been saying that Masvidal and Colby are probably best friends behind the scenes. They're probably like mortal enemies in real life. Let me think of some other things that I've said. I don't know. I'm just going to assume everything that I've said is wrong from now on because that's just how I feel right now. But anyway, let's talk about the Coleman event because this is something I can say... Uh, I was right, well, I don't know about right about, I bet on Chandler, but if anybody was watching my live video and saw how I got there, I feel pretty good about that actually, you know? And let me just set that table real quick. So basically Michael Chandler, the reason why I bet on him is because I was looking at the mindset of the two guys, right? Like Dan Hooker, this is just another fight for him. Like he's been in co-main events, he's been in main events. It's an important fight. It's not that important of a fight, you know? I mean, it is, but it's, you know, it's not the most important fight he's ever been in. Michael Chandler, I looked and I'm like, this is this is the culmination of this guy's entire life. Every like that's how he's looking at it, and it is that. It's his UFC debut. He's fighting against you know a guy that'll put him in the top five if he wins impressively. Everything is riding on his performance in that fight, and I just got a read on him. Like I looked at him, I'm like, is this the kind of guy that's going to step up to the plate in in a in a situation like that, or is he going to fold? And I was like, this guy's going to step up. Like. You know, I've been watching all of his interviews and watching all the behind the scenes, all that. I mean, anybody who's watching the live, that, that is why I picked him straight up. And wow. I mean, you want to talk about the absolute best case scenario for Michael Chandler. You can't, you couldn't, like, you couldn't have painted that out better if you scripted it. Okay. He goes out, he dirt naps Dan Hooker in the first round with a titanic left hand. Now, just real quick, I'll do a little bit of fight breakdown. What Dan Hooker was doing is his, his whole game plan seemed to be circle to Michael Chandler's left, right? His power hand is his right, just circle away from it. Just keep circling away. Your reach will be able to keep him away. Your reach will be able to keep him away. His right hand is his power hand, okay? That was literally, that's it. That's all he was doing, you know, like measuring with leg kicks, whatever. Apparently he thought that Michael Chandler could close distance fast with his right hand, but he wouldn't be able to do it with his left hand, which clearly was incorrect because he hit him with a titanic left and uh, closed the show. So he wins in impressive fashion, like a dominant, vicious knockout. And that would have been great on its own, right? But then what? Then they go, hey, Michael Chandler, here's the microphone. Introduce yourself to the world now. And he goes, this is the greatest moment of my professional career. Khabib, you want a blur dirt? Connor, you want it? Dustin Poirier, you can get it. Tony, I'm coming for all of you. And he calls them all out. And then he's, I mean, it's a fight game masterpiece, what he did. A masterpiece. He could have gone in there and talked about his family. He could have talked about the road that it took to get there. He could have talked about blee -blee 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 -blee, a million other things. He could have talked about his charity, Dustin Poirier, just blowing it in the post fight, okay? But Michael Chandler, hit a grand slam, a 700 foot grand slam with his fight and then his post fight speech. Absolutely perfect. Okay, this is your job. Your job, you wanna set your family up? Dustin Poirier always says, he's, he's fighting to set his family up. Like this is what it's about, it's for his family, okay? Clearly he's got the fight part locked down. But to act as if the other part doesn't matter, you're out of your mind, okay? The other part, who you call out, your persona that you leave. Like, don't talk about your charity, man. 
Like, that's cool that you have a charity. Talk about that in interviews that don't matter. When you're in the octagon and you just knocked out Conor McGregor, dude, demand the belt. Make a, make a challenge. Like, you know exactly what the landscape is. You just knocked out the fucking guy. A guy who's never been knocked out before. And you did it in impressive fashion. You fucked him up. Like, people, call, people counted you out. And you went in there and you fucking did it. Against all predictions. Against all odds. The superstar, the billionaire, everybody's just writing you off. And you went in there and just uh, took took his best shots in the first and then went out there and hurt. Didn't just knock him out, hurt him. Like, Connor was hurt after that fight, physically. Like, he hurt him and knocked him out. And then you get on the microphone and you're like, you know, I, I just want to say thank you about my charity. And but what are you doing, dude? Michael Chandler literally just gave you the, blue, the blueprint, exactly what to do. Do that. Okay, so any if, if any fighters ever stumble on this stupid channel that always predicts everything wrong, listen, watch Michael Chandler's post-fight speech and just do that, always. As a matter of fact, I would just say at this point, just do whatever Michael Chandler does because he's got this game on lockdown right now. And given that Habib, you know, really did seem like he was on the fence and I am positive, at least as positive, I mean, fuck, what the hell do I know? I'm wrong about everything. That had Connor won, he was going to fight Connor, But... I don't know, maybe he fights Michael Chandler. I mean, certainly that's the fight now. Certainly that's the fight. If he's gonna if he's gonna stay and do one more, unless unless Dustin demands it, I don't know. If Habib leaves and it's Dustin and, and Michael Chandler, I'm fucking in for that fight, man. But uh But yeah, so we'll see. But anyway, so that's Michael Chandler, home run. Dustin Poirier, wow. Okay. Now I obviously am a big Connor fan and I'm sad that he lost only because I wanted to see, you know, the, the game is, it's like, he's like the Tiger Woods of MMA, where it's just the game is much more exciting when he's out there and he's winning, you know, and him losing tonight was so shocking because I saw so many similarities between him and Tiger Woods, like as in when Tiger Woods was in his slump, I knew he was a drug addict. I knew it. I absolutely knew it. And then he had the DUI incident, whatever he goes into, you know, he also obviously had a serious back thing going on, but he goes into rehab, he comes out clean and boom, wins the masters. I knew it. And Connor was the same kind of thing where I, he obviously was, you know, had an issue with substances in 2018, you know, Coke, alcohol, whatever. And he came into this fight having not drank a drop of alcohol training every day for a year. And I just was like, this version of Connor can't lose. Like he's, you know, he can't lose. And Dustin Poirier was like, oh, you sure? Because, and there's so much to talk about there, dude. Okay, so first of all, Connor's a billionaire now, okay? He's a billionaire. Proper 12 is worth $2 billion. So think about that and just think about Connor's position in life right now versus when he was coming up. There, I, I, That's what I really want to focus on here before I talk about how badass Dustin is, is the difference between Connor right now and Connor when he was coming up, okay? First of all, Connor was starving, hungry. Like they, they talked about it actually in the pre-fight. Like his coaches were like, dude, we were we were training in like a, a windy, like garage gym. Okay, we didn't they didn't have like personal trainers that were timing all of this stuff, you know, and doing all this nutrition stuff, all this like surgical management of Connor McGregor. Like like he he was like now he's like Dolph Lundgren from Rambo or uh, Rocky Four. You know, where before he's just working hard, loving the sport, had everything to win, right? And now he's won everything. He's literally won everything. And I'll tell you now, I mean, obviously this is one of those things where like, you know, had he won, they go, oh, wow, Connor, blah, blah, blah. He loses and then everybody second guesses everything and I'm doing that right now. But I do want to specifically talk about a lot of this because number one, can you, when you're, you, you can't be a billionaire and be a hungry guy chasing the dream. Like he's got the dream. He won the dream. That's why the sport is so incredible is because everybody's fighting for the dream. Now, Floyd Mayweather figured out a way to, you know, get the dream and consider just continue to be excellent throughout his entire career. Canelo Alvarez seems to be that way as well. Boxing is a different sport, but still, you know, like uh, there are guys who who hit that pinnacle and they just and they keep growing. Connor is a different animal than those guys, though. You know, like he's not he's not like them. He's he is a ball of fire and passion. And this calm, collected Connor, like I said, he is a different person. He's a different guy. 
I mean, there's he, there's if you watch his press conferences it versus you know the press conferences leading up to any of it, so the Aldo fights, any of it, he's a different person. I mean, you add a billion dollars to someone's bottom line, and they're going to change. You know what I mean? And you know, can you be? Can you be as hungry? Can you be as? Can you be the wolf when you've won everything? You know, and. I don't know. I mean, if tonight is the only indication, the answer, I mean, Jesus, I'm, I don't want to like act like he didn't do anything right tonight either because he hit Dustin with some fucking titanic shots in the first round. You see the one where he threw the shoulder strike and Dustin's face is like, ooh, dude, Dustin is such a gangster, man. I, I mean, I'm serious. That guy, anyway. But so Connor did a lot of things right. Uh, he looked really, yeah, I mean, he looked great in the first round. Dustin, I said, anybody who's watching the live, you know, I, I, I can, I call it, I bet on Connor to win by knockout, like you know. I but I, I'll call the fight. I, I'll still get just as excited as a fan, regardless of where my money's at. Otherwise, I wouldn't bet because it would make it not fun. And I said, dude, Dustin came out with a perfect game plan, and he did great in the first round. Even though, but you know, the first round Connor won. He hit him with really heavy shots. But uh, but yeah, I mean, also I was listening. I, w- I was watching without the sound on, so I don't know. Maybe there's things that people heard that I didn't. But to me, it looked very clear that Connor won the first round. Um, but Dustin, man, Jesus. So when Dustin was in there and they, and they started talking to each other, I was like, oh, he's in there to fight. Like Dustin's there to fight, man. He's not going to, he's not going to let this guy walk through him at all. And I was just thinking at that point, like, damn, if Connor does get him out of there, it's going to be so impressive because Dustin is not going to, he's not laying down. And, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, here's, here's the other thing. Like the, the obvious thing to talk about is this. Connor came up at 145 and never lost, never got challenged, never got hurt, never got stung, nothing. Obliterated everyone at 145. Everyone. You know, Chad Mendez gave him kind of a tough deal, but that was it. Everyone else, he literally walked through. Anyone that he hit hard, they went to sleep. He went up to 155 and he knocked out Eddie Alvarez, but he had to hit him with a lot of shots, right? But that's after fighting at 170 against an original 155er and going seven rounds without knocking him out while hitting him with absolutely titanic shots. Then he goes, Eddie, hits him with a bunch. I mean, Eddie, he looked like his power translates to 155. Then Khabib, and then Cowboy, whose chin is very suspect, and then now Dustin Poirier. And like, so you look at his career outside of the 145 pound division and you're like, okay, does his power translate? No, I mean, it doesn't. He's still very, very powerful, but like the sample size is big enough now. Okay, the shots that he hit Eddie Alvarez with in the first round of, of that fight, even you know his master class, 145 pounds, they're, they're done in the first, right? The shots he hit Nate Diaz with for sure at 145 pounds, those guys are done, though. And the shots he hit Dustin with tonight at 145 pounds, he put everyone to sleep with those shots. So, yeah, I mean, he also fought different, you know, maybe he's been boxing a lot. I mean, he didn't throw any kicks, none of those spinning back kicks, all the stuff that he normally did to position guys um but the number one thing i think that he did wrong is i think he didn't respect dustin i think he thought that this was going to be a walkthrough fight and part of that is his fault part of it's his coach's fault you know like his when i was one of the reasons i was so confident that he was going to win is because i was watching all these interviews with you know with fucking john Kavanaugh and you know all of his people and all of them were like you guys don't understand how good he is they're like <laughs> You guys, literally, he's he's unbeatable. Like he's the best ever. He's yada yada. He's whatever. And you got to think about this, man. Like these coaches are human beings. Okay, they watch the same rise as Connor. And then, in addition to all the things that we've seen, they're seeing behind the scenes. They're seeing all the other deals that he's getting. They're watching him launch a whiskey brand that becomes worth two billion dollars. They're seeing, watching him do the Connor, you know, McGregor fast. Everything he does blows up, and they just look at him as like this mythical creature that like can't do anything wrong and that's great except that you know d- you're not his coach anymore right like I- i'm not throwing rocks at john Kavanaugh or any of these guys i'm just saying that like they were so complimentary of connor that i could just tell they- they've fallen into this like you know here's connor and connor just did not respect dustin every single one of those guys every and that that i challenge you guys to go find a single conversation that any of those guys had when it came to Connor fighting Dustin where they did not say oh man it's gonna be a rough day for Dustin every single one of them said that in every single interview no one no one said Dustin is a dog fight Dustin's a fucking dog fight 
You know, I know we knocked him out in the first round of the last time, but 155 pounds, that's a completely different universe. This guy, I mean, you, we, we watched his last hand. Yeah, I mean, he's a killing machine, right? Who said that? No one. They didn't respect him, you know? And I'm not saying that if he had he respected him, he would have won, but like they did not show him the proper respect. And I'm not making excuses for him. That just, to me, in, in the hindsight, it looks like an objective fact. Okay, that's what I got on Connor. I think he'll come back um, and we'll find out. How he fights in his next fight is going to dictate the rest of his career. Straight up. Like he comes back and he gets an impressive win. We're all right. He comes back. He loses. Not good. It'll be, you know, how hungry can you be to go out and lose when you have $2, million, $2 billion, right? Like fighting's fun when you win. Not so fun when you lose. Um. Anyway, that's that. So I, I think I owe people I have to eat shit now or something. I said that about the Habib fight, but... You know, I just assumed Connor would win the goddamn fight. My kind of, I bet each shit was about whether Khabib would do it or not. Not so much about whether Connor, I would just assume Connor was going to win this goddamn fight. But um, but now let's talk about Dustin because I, I, I mean, I got to be honest, like I lost money on Connor and obviously I wanted Connor to win, but I gained so much respect for Michael Chandler and Dustin Poirier tonight that I, I'm not like bummed out or anything, you know? Like that performance by Dustin Poirier, given the circumstances, like this is the thing, this is the whole thing that I love more than anything about the sport. The whole reason I bet on Michael Chandler is like really thinking about what's going on in these guys' heads. Because you think about what a what a fight in, in the octagon is. There's no bigger test of a man in the world. There's nothing. There's nothing that could possibly test a man more than that, you know? And so the circumstances of the fight itself that's why guys like me and Mix Molly Whoppery, you know, if you really look at the kind of videos he does and the kinds of videos I do, they're always centered around fights that have a human aspect to it. It's not just like, this guy's good, this guy's good. Oh, this guy's coming up, this guy's coming up. You know, that's why I don't do videos like that. Because like, that's not why I love the sport. You know, what I love the sport is, why I love the sport is like Michael Chandler fought his whole life to get a shot in UFC. He knows everything's on the line. He knows everything's on the line. Everything he's ever done in his life is on the fucking line tonight. Now let's see what he does. And he does that. I I love it, dude. I love it. I like I mean, I'm there's I have no shame saying that there have been certain narratives in MMA that I actually couldn't tell the fucking story without crying cuz I get so, you know, amped up thinking about what this dude did under certain circumstances. And Dustin Poirier winning that fight is a fucking unbelievable, man. I mean, seriously, like, like, unbelievable. I mean, he got knocked out by Connor in the first round the last time they fought, and every single person picked Connor to win by knockout. Everyone, and this is a guy who he acknowledged the first time they fought, he was so concerned about everybody picking Connor. Like they acted like Connor had, like it was like. There's the UFC, there's Connor, and then there's this fuck stick over here that we're going to go feed to him. The entire event was that way. Oh, Connor, tell us about your businesses and oh, tell us about all the things you've done, Connor. Hey, Dustin, so uh what what are you doing again? Dustin Poirier, like uh what do you So tell me about the last time when this fucking this superstar knocked you out. And to to go in under those circumstances and then fight like that, you know. Like he was I mean, I keep, dude, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it, actually. That moment in the first round when they traded shots and Dustin started and talking shit to Connor, I was like, oh my God. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be totally honest. I wasn't rooting for Connor at that point. I wasn't. When, and when Dustin started talking shit, you know, I mean, like, I'm, I can't not root for Connor, but there was a big part of me that was like, damn, the fucking balls on this guy, dude. He's talking shit to Connor. He's breaking his balls about landing shots on him. I got you on that one. I was like, unfucking real. I mean, it's just like, like I said, the ultimate fucking test of a man. Go in, it's not just about fighting Conor McGregor. It's about all the other shit that lived around it. And he's in there taunting Conor when he lands shots. It's unfucking real, dude. And he weathered his storm. He went out with a perfect fucking game plan. Try to get him tired. Pin him against the fence. Don't let him get off on you. Land leg kicks. And he came out in the second round. I mean, he that was a brutal fucking knockout, man. Like, that wasn't like a, 
You know, he didn't just catch him with a shot. He caught him with a shot, and he got him with another one. And those last ones, like, you know, you could see the difference between a shot that racks a guy's equilibrium and one that hits square that fucking hurts. Those shots hurt, man. He fucked him up. What a dog, man. What a fucking dog. Jorge Masvidal, that's what he says. He's like, Dustin Diamond is a fucking dog. That's what he is. And now he's going to reap the benefits because guess what? You know what you get when you knock Conor McGregor out? You get to become Nate Diaz. You get to become George Masvidal. If he would have had a better fucking microphone performance, it doesn't really matter that much. But goddamn, man, that, the world was on a platter for him right there if he would have nailed that microphone speech. You know, he tried to do the I'm not surprised, but he could, you know, hey, I'm not. It's just not who he is. As a matter of fact, I take it back. I take it back. It's not who he is. It's just not who he is. You know, he's like, he tried, you know, he's like, I'm not surprised. You know, I did. I put in the work. He's just, that's not who he is. He's just a fucking hard as nails fighter. A man's man that's going to have your back, fight you till he can't. He's going to, he's a game bred dog. He's going to drag himself back into the middle of the octagon with his two front legs, with his two back legs chopped off. He's a fucking boss, man. And tonight he proved it. And now he's going to really reap the rewards because he's the fucking man now. So congratulations to Dustin Poirier. Congratulations to Michael Chandler. Like I was talking about with the Connor and uh, Habib rematch, I couldn't root against Habib because Connor's already won. Connor's already won, man. He's a fucking billionaire. I would let Dustin Poirier beat the fuck out of me for a billion dollars and I'll heartbeat. And I would have no chance in the fight. Connor at least had a shot. <laughs> so anyway, I I feel disappointed that we're not going to see Connor and Khabib, but not so much because I just love this sport. I, like, I swear, I love this sport. I love it so much. I love it so much. It's the best. So... Anyway, if you like the content, subscribe and ring the bell. Don't listen to any of my predictions ever again, but I love you guys. Peace.